The last 12 months have been an interesting one for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with a beautiful daughter. I gave up a very harmful addiction after 18 years and I intend on making hajj insha'Allah. In preparation for the biggest journey of my life, I have decided that this continuous battle with my ego and controlling my anger would have to be tackled head on. First and foremost for the sake of Allah and the betterment of my deen. The story of this documentary series started with me asking the legendary British Moroccan MMA fighter and coach Khalid Ismail to train me for a full week as part of an intense MMA boot camp of all the major disciplines of mixed martial arts in the hope that not only would I learn new skills to improve my general health and fitness but most importantly be humble and disciplined enough to allow myself to be managed by an expert who is more knowledgeable, stronger and experienced than me. Will my ego and temperament allow me to truly learn from Coach Khalid? I guess we're about to find out. Can't show this one after here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like old Chinese, uh, old, old Chinese movies where they fight over the master's book. Yeah. <laughs> so, the kung fu moves. Yeah, that's it. So, ah, I know your kung fu moves now. <laughs> So you're looking on, how are you feeling about today's um, session with Diddy? I mean, yesterday, uh, you know, how, how well did he do yesterday, in your honest opinion? I think he done, actually, I think he done well, because as I said yesterday, we, we covered a lot, um, a lot of stuff in that session. So now it's for him to just keep practicing and try to grasp what we've learned. Today, I think he's going to see why wrestling is the daddy of martial arts. Yeah, so this one's going to be a little bit tough. The grueling one, yeah, so hopefully he's ready. Yeah. I mean, you know, like he, he does need a little bit of pain so he can really learn. I think yesterday, uh, I don't think you were going easy on him, but I think he found some of it too easy. Oh, really, yeah? I think, yeah. <laughs> oh, he messaged you after? Yeah. No, no, he didn't. Really. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean no, no. need pain? Huh? What do you mean need pain? We're not people who self-flagellate, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, when I came into him, I said, I'm sure, how are you feeling? I was a bit sore. From what you did, because I didn't do nothing. <laughs> but I, I, I was texting Coach Hall yesterday and I was just uh, focusing on my agility or lack of the agility. You know, when you just do weights and that's all you do, there's a stiffness that comes with it because you're either going that yeah. way, yeah. that way, yeah. or this way, and that's yeah. it. And um, increasingly, it's making him think about how important mobility is. I would say if, if, you're gonna, if you can't get to a wrestling club or stuff like that at a young age, start with gymnastics Gymnastic. yeah because yeah. uh, if you think about it, a lot of people when they come training a lot of things hold them back flexibility <coughs> strength all this like normal stuff and then um, i found that if you have flexibility you'll never have a problem with doing kickboxing no matter how old you are so you can always kick high and all that stuff so you have certain abilities that you can do when you anything anything that i, I think i think gymnastics because it's more dynamic you, you have you have tumble in it so it's kind of like similar to what we do you learn to fall down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah? You ready? The second session was on wrestling, um, a art which I've only ever seen in WWE. Um, belly belly suplex, pile drivers, power bombs, DDTs, and that's as much of wrestling as I know. And obviously, following MMA, you understand how important uh, grappling is, whether it's Roman Greco, or Sambo, or Jiu Jitsu. And it's also the martial art which I was told that many injuries can happen very easily. Sprained fingers, hairline fractures, bruised ribs. Um, so I knew that today's uh, session would be gruesome.
The shooting and the sprawling was something I definitely struggled with. And, and you know, every time I did it, um, I was feeling it. SubhanAllah, you know, my thighs were burning, my legs were burning. Um, I just felt sizzled and I wasn't getting the form and the technique correct. And it was important because the way you shoot is the way you will eventually take someone down. the Strong man, anyway, that was an intense warm up. Bro. That's very intense. So, very interesting what you said about gymnastics being high in the priority, if you look yeah. at anything else. And you can see there how beneficial it is to be agile and nimble and fit. Yeah, I think when we do the session, you'll see why you need to be why you need flexibility. And then you'll see the guys who are, it saves you from getting injuries and stuff as well. So a lot, a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of crossover into many sports. Imagine if, if you're playing football, the power you can generate, if I'm able to kick, if my leg can go further back, yeah. the more power I can generate. So there's, there's, a, there's a very good crossover with being flexible and stuff. So flexibility and strength though, it needs to go together. Not just one. Did you ready? Drilling, 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 it made me realise throughout the session that there were certain things Khalid was saying which wasn't making sense to me. Um, I was tired, um, I was exhausted, my ribs were hurting, the warm-up and the stretches were quite gruesome. So I thought, yeah, you know what, I'd uh, distract Khalid by asking him some questions that might give me a bit of a breather. So in a wrong situation, you put someone up like this. Yeah. And then immediately Khalid went into like demonstration mode and he showed me. That doesn't telling you it was painful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in this situation you can't do that. What's, what's the advisory thing to do? If someone holds what, that, that one, like this. I guess, you know, one of the things I'm learning, there's a level of shyness between me and Khalid. Um, as a friend and now obviously as a coach for this project. Um, that I don't want to be seen as this kind of like, it's actually known as spazzy white belt, someone who's quite erratic and quite, you know, uncontrollable um, when they train or spar and it can lead to injuries. I didn't want to be that person. But nor do I think even if I was that person, Khalid couldn't correct me and put me in my place very much instantaneously um, because of how versed he is in these uh, arts. Okay, let's go. <laughs> go <Copy>. Pete. <laughs> Drilling the move with Pete, again, you know, um, the jiu-jitsu session, I felt Pete's weight or the way he distributed his weights and how, how agile and flexible he is, uh, but not as much as in the wrestling session where I really got to feel uh, while I was pummeling with him, uh, while I was, you know, just um, trying to look for the underhooks, um, I felt Pete's weight. And, you know, and even when we were doing breakfall and, you know, he was then demonstrating the move to me, you know, I realised that, you know, Pete, is a serious guy himself. He's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu and, and with a background in kickboxing, the guy was built like a, uh, a tank. Now, obviously, there was no sparring uh, because I, again, realize that you know wrestling is an art which is very injury prone um so we drill 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 the single leg sweep um i was finding it hard to understand the concept of hooking the leg um single leg takedown double leg takedown and then obviously the the defense by sporting Go. 
three, two, Explainably harder. Be honest, how are you finding the actual technique? It's a lot to take in over one class or one session. So I'm going to have to definitely revisit all of this at some point. Inshallah ta'ala. Obviously, my in-laws don't live that far from here. I was actually speaking to the missus. She actually said, why don't you go check for Khalid Ismail Academy? Oh, you're just looking for an excuse to visit your parents' home, to be honest. But um, yeah, I might have to come once, twice a month to polish up some of these moves. It's a lot to take in. But definitely from a street implementation, I can see how you might even have to improvise. But, um, but you, you got it on camera, you saw how much I was struggling. There was culture in one, two, three. It became pretty much instantaneously easier to understand. I don't know why. Mm. Khalid, how is he doing in terms of you know, these moves? They're very, they're, obviously, they're quite technical. Yeah. Um, and you wouldn't expect someone to naturally pick it all up, but... Um, he's doing right. <laughs> he's doing right. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. Again, so yeah. everyone learns at different rates. So for me, it's just trying to... Well, it's fast tracking. I mean, a week is a lot to take in in a week. So, and he's never done this before. So, he's, I mean, he's, he's doing right. He's doing right. It's funny how he got the last bit really quick. Three, when it was all the other stuff, you found hard. What do you think the chances are of him sticking to this moving forward after these six days? And Inshallah, I think he will. Um, speaking to him, I think he's, he's growing into it. He's, he likes the martial arts. So I think hopefully, man, it's good for anyone anyway. So even, even if you do it as, twice a week as a hobby and stuff, it's, yeah. it's, it's knowledgeable. Where do you see him in three months' time? Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's still training. I think, I think he'll, do, he'll do all right if he sticks to it, mm. if he sticks to it. He just rushes, and I think you'll, you'll see it in the camera. He, he rushes, it's, it's that eagerness to, to get it right so quickly, which is a, lot, a common mistake with a lot of people. Like that whole, oh, I want to do it quick. Um, and it's slowing it down, getting the movements correct, and then you can speed it up later. That's the show, that's what you should do. And just one other question, obviously he's been rushing as you said, but when you've been telling him to slow down and stuff like that, has he been picking that up and is he yeah. listening? Yeah, so he listens, he's listening, so he's good, yeah. That's so the worst problem of mine, by the way. Yeah, I can see that. I rush things. Yeah, I can see that. My dad watches him now, he's a distance kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. That's an eagerness to get something right though. Yeah, but that's a, it's a common mistake with a lot of people though. So they, they rush and they think, you know what happens? Because when we're, we're in the age of information and everything is, I want it now. Mm. So I want to be good now. And you don't realize that, okay, we've done this 10 million times. So you have to repeat, repeat, repeat. And then you'll see someone do it and you think, oh, okay, that, I can do that. Is that a generation I do can happen? No, not really. I think it's just, it's not, man. It's not, it's not, man. <laughs> no, no, not really. Instant, it's, instant it's, use, instant information, it's, instant gratification. It's something above Amazon Prime. Yeah. I yeah. want it now. Instant yeah. Ijazah. Yeah. Everything, I, I want it, I want everything now. I will need it to be, I need to be good now. And, People, and I think people forget that it's the journey. Even though I was saying yesterday, enjoy the journey. You're not, bruv, it takes 10 years to get a black belt. That's longer than people take to get, become a doctor. So it, there's something about the art that you, it takes time to understand this, to get this knowledge. It's much longer than the average relationship for marriage in the UK, bruv. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The resting session ended with a conditioning session and, and most of Harley's sessions end with some level of some type of conditioning and with exception to jiu-jitsu which had a spar at the end um, and as part of the conditioning at the end there was constant sprawling and shooting and my body just wanted to give up I, you know at that point I was, I was, I was questioning myself why, why are you even doing this Take down, outside trick, 
The conditioning at the end, there was constant sprawling and chewing, and my body just wanted to give up. And then you got Jamal floating about, you know, looking for pain and gruesome and me to be, and I'm in so much agony I can't even talk. You know, and, and Khalid was highlighting when, I, when the form or the technique wasn't right on the shoot or the sprawl and he made me do it again and again um, until I finished the exact number of uh, reps he wanted me to do in, in, in sprawling and shooting. But my muscle was in pain, I, I was aching, my legs were gone. And yeah, I was beginning to now wonder to myself, why was I doing all of this? Let's go, eight sprawls. Eight sprawls now, let's go. One. Good. Two. Good. Three. Four. Five. The wrestling session, without a shadow of a doubt, was one of the most physically demanding and challenging things I've ever done. Today we did uh, grappling, right? And uh, a common um, a common conception is that grappling is the sunnah. It's a prophetic practice. So as I was researching for today's reflection, uh, two narrations came up. The very well-known one about the Prophet ﷺ, uh, wrestling with Rukana. Rukana was a uh, wrestling champion of Quraysh. And he was a disbeliever at the time. And he challenged the Prophet ﷺ to uh, a wrestling match. In which different narrations say that Prophet ﷺ slammed him slammed to the floor three times. And then later on, Rukana became a Muslim. So that's the most famous, iconic narration, yeah? Then there was another narration, Khalid, which made me actually think of both of us. There was a time when the Prophet ﷺ walked into the masjid and the Sahaba were grappling. Mm. And when the Prophet ﷺ walked in, they kind of stopped. They were a bit shy. And Rasulullah asked them, what were you guys doing? And they were a bit like stuck to like, oh, Ya Rasulullah, we were paraphrased. We were starting to see who from amongst us is the strongest. And in the hadith, the famous one is, the strong wrestler is not the strong man. Rather, it is the one who holds his anger back, anger back in a fit of rage. We had the hadith. Yeah, yeah. And that was done in context. He actually mentions the wrestler. So I think there's one thing we can actually establish that there is a tradition of grappling uh, in Islam. The Sahaba did it. The Prophet ﷺ engaged in it. But it's interesting how he mentioned the control of the anger in the same sentence as uh, wrestling. Yeah. So let me ask you something. When we spoke about this project, and even in the intro, I spoke about I have some anger issues. Uh, is that something that you've faced in your life? Would you say you have anger issues or had anger issues? Anger issues. Uh, yeah, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I, I, that's why I started martial arts. Um, when I was, I think I, 
when I was younger, I, I think I told you on, the, on your yeah. podcast, I used to lock myself up in the bedroom, mm. I know, in the bathroom. And then my mum my used to say to me, for half an hour, you should hear a banging noise. And I'd come out with a big red mark on my head. So I didn't really know how to deal with anger. And then, uh, how old were you when you clocked you had this? I didn't even know. Like, I, I just, you know, I think I, I think I didn't know how to express myself. So I'm not very... Um, I think when I get angry, I, don't, I find it hard to talk. So um, I didn't know how to express myself. So I think physically that's what manifested. I used to start, this was a way for a release. And then she took me to like, martial arts training and stuff. So I was able to kind of divert into something that was good. So and then I realized as well though, through martial arts, sorry, yeah, for, uh-huh. but through martial arts is that exactly what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, that when you did get angry, you generally get smashed. Of course. Because... So you're saying when you go into a fight or a competition vexed, you tend to lose that one? Yeah, if you go, because it's like, you, 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 you're not, you're not, because obviously, you, you've seen, we all will be angry. Yeah. So when you get angry, you kind of like, you become laser focused and you miss, you miss things. So when you're a little bit more, not, uh, it's weird, it's like, you need this, aggr- you need an aggression, to keep on your toes. Yeah, but not anger. And that's, and that's the difference. I think once you can control it and harness it, um, then, it's a, then you're able to use it when you're fighting. And I think that is, from my understanding, I think that's what the hadith is mm. saying. Like, the strongest wrestler is the one who controls his anger. Even, even if, like I said yesterday, even if I knew that I could beat someone up, say on road if people start, I look at them and I think, you know what? I don't want to do nothing to you. Like, because I know they're angry. They don't know what you're capable of. So it's better that you control your anger. Otherwise, you go to jail. Mm. So it's just leave them, leave them to it. How, how many of those situations have you been in without giving a specific number? Quite a few. Quite a few, yeah? yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. You know, in, uh, in terms of grappling, I was also reading a, uh, a fatwa by a UK scholar called Muthi Adam Ibn Kothari, Kothari. And he said, look, you know, wrestling and grappling uh, should be done for the following reasons. Number one, self-defense, right? And I think in an environment where, whether we like it or not, statistically speaking, Muslims are the, the group that is the highest target of hate crimes, especially visible Muslim women. Mm. Hijab, niqab, burqa, the elderly, young women. Is this something you would encourage our community to get involved in from a self-defense point of view? Yes. From, from, a, from an importance to one to ten, how important? Ten. Or 11, 12. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, uh, I don't see why you shouldn't. I think every single person should be training and doing some sort of um, martial arts. Um, it's, impor- it's important. It's, there's so many lessons that you learn from this. Even forget the self-defense side. There's so many lessons that you can learn from this. Um, how to humble yourself. Even today, like we, when, you, when you came up on me and said, what happens if someone does this on the road? Yeah. I was like, oh, wait a minute, how do I end up on the floor? Yeah. It's, <laughs> do you get what I'm it's, it's, it's that ego that you thought, oh, maybe you might have come with a thought process before, and thought, how oh, if I grab you? And someone might have done that to you before, and you didn't have the answer. Now all of a sudden, that's changed. That changed your perception. 100%. So there's, I mean, there's, 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 there's so many benefits to list. I mean, we will be here all day. And I think just um, like the health benefits, you make friends, you, you, you build a community. Man, we, we train at, uh, mashallah, not only in my academy, I train at Legion Grappling Club as well. So the brothers there, they have sisters only. So there's so many benefits that, imagine like people from all different walks of life mm-hmm. come together and you share this common thing on the map. Mm-hmm. And then there's respect, there's a ustad, you have to respect the ustad. There's so many things I'm saying to you, and I think we lose, we, we're losing that. Um, in today's society and through martial arts because it still has that ethos you're still able to hold on to it and again for us as Muslims it's very important to keep that and even for our children to be in that environment Law, order, hierarchy, respect Of course Discipline Of course, all, all they know For Muslims if you know if, if you believe and which is widely accepted that striking and, and professionally competing in striking is haram because of the hadith about striking one's face and so forth that whole debate then definitely uh, grappling and wrestling from a self-defense point of view is something that I would definitely encourage all Muslims to do because it would be practicing a sunnah.